Hey, Chloe, thanks so much. Um, and thank you as well for the wonderful introduction. Um, so yes, just building on that, as Chloe said, I head up the editorial here at CX Network. Um, and we are joined today um, by the COO of Yum Day, um, as well as our speakers from two major German brands that have built a team using tech-based outsourcing. Um, so as we just mentioned, Sarah Patanari is the BPO Partner Manager at Refurbed, which is an e-commerce business for refurbished electronics. Um, and Dr. Carsten is the Head of Customer and and sales service for Express Group, um, which uses an AI-powered platform that promises to simplify tax returns. Um, Neil Bartram will be joining us soon as the conversation progresses. Um, to our panelists, welcome to this session. Um, we are going to go straight into the questions today. Um, and this first question goes to Sarah. Um, can you tell us about your past experience with outsourcing call center operations? Of course, thank you very much for inviting me to this exciting session and for the question. Um, for us as a startup, especially uh, the, the great challenge for us has been since the beginning, of course, to be able to, uh, to grow fast in the customer service and to be able also to do it internationally because Refurb in its specific uh, was born in Vienna, but then grew, uh, grew up rapidly uh, throughout Europe, let's say Italy, Sweden, Ireland, and uh, the Netherlands. So the struggle, the challenge uh, was really to be able to set up teams which uh, could be trained in a fast way and could be able to, uh, to cover more languages or as much languages as possible. Um, and Dr. Carsten, tell us about your experience. Yes, uh, so thank you as well, Melanie, for uh, being able to join in today. Um, so one of the challenges we at least face as a, as a tech service provider, of course, seasonality. I think in many countries it's the same, uh, that you cope with seasonality in your um, supply and demand. Um, so, and the unique opportunity in this case with uh, Day was, of course, that you basically have no contract lengths. You are basically, the, you decide uh, which talent you, uh, you want to board in, you basically, you can coach them and uh, you are basically still the owner of the, uh, of, of the process. While well, often if you go with traditional outsourcers, of course, they want to provide a team lead. Uh, they basically want to be in, in, in charge. You have long uh, contracts list with a dedicated volume. You, you basically, you have to provide to certain uh, outsourcers. And so in our experience, that was, uh, was very valuable. So that we were basically to, to manage the flexibility on short term basis based on our needs. Excellent. Um, okay, well, um, looking at how you actually um, manage the spending now, um, the overheads for, um, for your contact center, how do you currently optimize your outsourcing spend and what challenges have you faced in trying to optimize that? Um, Dr. Carsten, perhaps we'll go to you first for this one. Yes. I think one of the challenges, of course, usually is that you have um, sometimes different um, uh, software for inbound and for outbound. Yeah, so you have different, uh, different, yeah, unique features for your inbound software and for your outbound software. So basically, we go currently in our current setup with two different um, software companies, and in that case, for example, at Yumday, they are basically elaborating to creating basically their own software-driven approach. Uh, we were able to take part as a, at, at first users uh, and, and uh, basically work to create a better experience for the customer and as well for the, for the agent. So I think they provided a unique opportunity to basically try to overcome some of the difficulties uh, you have today with the current uh, software landscape. So really trying to build an inbound and outbound product um, I think there's still many things to do, but I think they really tackle a topic that basically we face in our current operations uh, many challenges with, with reporting, with getting agents uh, basically used to two different systems. Um, so I think therefore one software driven approach uh, can really bring the, um, yeah, opportunities for, for a company. Okay, um, and Sarah, how do you currently optimize your outsourcing spend? 
I can actually uh, confirm what Dr. Uh, Carson Abel already said, because in our case, of course, also seasonality is a thing. And being able to, to optimize costs um, using the flexibility that UMDA offers is really a game changer, uh, especially looking at the multi-language skilled agents, um, which we can really flexibly you know, um, use in the peak seasons, but also um, really looking at the productivity itself because one of the uh, the challenges are also being able to, to cover uh, some um, main major costs throughout the seasonalities and um, being able also to base the costs and the prices you have really only on the productivity so the the time uh, the agent is available is in um, and it's doing something of a major uh, change for us as well so um, that together with experience also, you can uh, really find on the UMDA platform and the, the UMDA talents, this has allowed us to really optimize and to do the best out of uh, the talents we, we could find in the pool. Excellent, and build a team in less than 40 days. So this ticks a lot of boxes. Um, okay, um, so let's talk about the um, access to the global talent pool that this solution provides. Um, obviously, in Europe, um, we have a lot of very diverse countries, um, same kind of in Africa and Asia as well, whereas in the US, everybody speaks the same language, you, know, you don't really have that kind of um, geographic diversity. Um, but tell me about the benefits that you see um, in terms of having access to that global talent of CX agents. Um, and Sarah, we'll start with you first on that one. Of course. Uh, for us, it was really... Um exciting to see how fast this could be. Um, mm -hmm. I can make a really concrete example because at the end of 2021, we had the Christmas season peak and we needed to find fast uh, multi-language skilled agents. And um, um, you know, having access to the Yum Day platform, which was pretty new for us uh, back then, we could be able to, within one week, to interview and select and start training um, for new talents for, for our project. So this was really amazing for us to really be able to find several uh, experience levels and language levels and to be able to also make it tailor-made for your project. So this was really a success story for us. Okay, just a quick follow-up on that, please, Sarah. Um, if you hadn't have had um, the Young Day solution at your disposal, how would you have solved that challenge? How would you have staffed that need? You mean, uh, According to, I mean, what I can say about that specific situation is was that we really need urgent in in an urgent way more um, talents for us. And looking at other partners we had option to, to cooperate with, this could have never been possible due to you know um, like waiting times or in weeks of you know um, agreements necessary and also um, limits what the flexibility also for the future uh, cooperation with them um, relates so for for us it was really a game changer to be able to um, have a pool already to to select people and to get um, in direct contact with them and also to see that the software based um, um, you know, tools they had in, in their, just at their disposal was perfect, a perfect match for, for our needs. Excellent. Um, okay, and the same question then to you, Dr. Carsten. Yes, many thanks, Marie. So I think there are three aspects um, that we benefited from. First, as you mentioned, with your approach, you basically, yeah, you didn't have to do any recruiting because all the information was uh, basically available at hand. Um, I think the second topic is, at least coming from a German-speaking uh, country, uh, we realized that we had basically globally many talents who basically live abroad, but were able to speak fluently German because they lived in Germany for, uh, for many parts in, 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 in their life, but then basically returned to Turkey, to the Middle East, uh, to, <coughs> to Argentina. So... Uh, basically, uh, uh, basically around the world, and the third aspect is by having then basically direct interaction with the talents. You basically identify basically based on the vast experience of them. Some were team leader, leaders in the in the, in in the past. That you, as you scale and you basically ramp up your talent pool, you basically can use some of them as 
kind of internal uh, team leaders for your for your operations. So in, in a sense, as you get to know the talents better, you get, of course, not everyone performs as you like. I think that's a normal topic because product fit is not always comes with the, with the character fit, which is unique basically because you, you basically can terminate in, in, in a second. I think that's a normal process. And at the same time, you realize where there are really talents and which you can involve more in your product, which you can involve more in your in, in your sales and service process. So basically that you basically yeah, develop internal team leaders from the Hyundai uh, talent pool. So that was a real benefit from us uh, up until now. Excellent. Um, so tell me about, um, Dr. Carson, same with you. Um, how do you currently manage and train your CX agents? Yes. So basically, we we ha have our own, we call it retention or outbound sales uh, team. Um, and basically, we took one uh, one of our senior leaders or one of our senior sales guys aside and then basically started to train them um, the, the talents pools for obviously into the product uh, but then of course we basically took part in the in their calling um, we gave them um, yeah direct feedback uh, the talents so having the ability to basically to to listen to their um, to their performance we could give them direct uh, feedback and uh, so basically we have one one yeah one person uh, who's basically available all the time from from the morning and, and the evening so basically because they are uh, yeah working uh, on, on on different time shifts and so basically we adjusted his schedule as well so he basically works three core times a day um to basically to manage each each of the talents individually and as i said as we basically scaled up we then didn't take one of our people we then took uh, one of the of the Yumday talents to to basically uh, have the function of an internal team lead um, who, who basically was deeply into our product. Uh, yeah, of course, there's also then a different uh, a different cost base uh, for us because, of course, this uh, this talent obviously was not located in Germany. Mm. Um, and you have that. Um, it that kind of sounds like you have an a, an EX focus group kind of benefit from those EMD employees. They're feeding back on how you can improve employee experience, agent experience, um, and obviously then that will feed back into your CX as well. Um, yes, I mean the, the 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 next step for us will be um, so basically they started with with with, with outbound activities. So um, our next step will be to integrate them in our inbound services. So basically to train them on a, on a broader basis uh, on our products and mm -hmm. then integrate them with our, uh, in, in, in our inbound scheduling, um, so scheduling into our inbound service team uh, in, in a topic. And then obviously uh, training them on, on a broader scope because we had a we had a good feedback on the customer experience uh, with them, um, and by this basically testing them, uh, are they able to to work on a broader scope of activities? As you know, because if there are inbound activities, you don't always know, and you not, cannot always categorize the uh, customer intent. Okay, okay, um, and Sarah, same question to you, please. Yeah, uh, for our in our case, it's a, a bit of a hybrid version what we developed with our Yumde uh, talents because they started uh, in the first level uh, for our international markets, but uh, growing with the expertise and the knowledge, then they were able to actually join the our in-house, let's say, second level team. Uh, so they are an uh, integral part and are managed by our in-house uh, team leaders. Uh, the training is, of course, also something together with the quality we want to we wanna really monitor in-house. So um, it's taken care of by our team expertise, which is then able to, you know, um, do regular update um, meetings and also take care of the info based material we take we give at their um, at their disposal but the great development they were able to to make to make it was really decisive for us because the management was really easy and they were really totally integrated in our in-house team which is uh, normally um, there for for our second level customers so it was an amazing development to see 
It sounds great. Yeah. And I guess, um, I guess like, just jump, jump in there, Melanie, if, if I can, is <clears throat> one of the things that you see so commonly in any sort of outsourcing situation, right, is that you want, is that clients want that visibility of how good the quality is of those agents, right? And the ability of the Yumde platform to simply allow a client to listen to a call, to actually provide a quality feedback directly in the platform that the agent can, can see and that is scored and then that they can actually listen to in their own time or schedule a, you know, a follow-up to discuss it with them. And that ability to just listen to those calls so easily as a client, to see the, the, you know, the live quality scores there and also give feedback from your internal team or those expertise, that those expertise or SMEs that you have within your, you know, within your group is really powerful. And it eliminates one of the, you know, the biggest things with this classic BPO outsourcing, which is that somebody else is just doing it and it's a little bit unclear what's really happening over there. And I think that transparency really, it really is a game changer. Totally. I can maybe uh, say two, two more words about it because really being able to access uh, voice files calls so easily, it's also a game changer for us if we make a direct comparison to other uh, partner situations. Uh, there are always limitations for any reason whatsoever. And um, this and the reporting easiness also what um, what Yumde offers is something we have never encountered actually with any other partner so far. Fantastic. Um, now we've done the case studies, Neil, I want to bring you into the conversation with some direct questions now. Um, so can you tell me more about searching for talents and training as well on the Yumde platform? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and the, the talent searching is something that when I joined Yumde from a traditional BPO, it, it just blew my mind, frankly, because you just go onto the platform and, you know, there's an advanced search feature. You can say, look, I'm looking for someone with this language. I'm looking for someone with this language and this language, and I want it to be at this level. I would also like them to have two, at least two years, three years experience in customer service. I'd like them to have a little bit of outbound sales experience. I want them to have some experience in a specific vertical, telecoms, for, for example, right? And you can you just put all of those parameters in and then you see a list of the talents that are available. Uh, and I guess the key thing is that that's, that's a matter of seconds, right? You, you put that information in and seconds later, those people are popping up to you and you can interface with them directly. So right away, you can send them a message. You can schedule an interview with them. You can offer them a job directly through the, through the platform. And so it just takes what in a traditional BPO is such a cumbersome process of sending the request to recruitment, you know, scheduling interviews, doing this, sending a job offer, signing contract. It just it takes that entire process and is something that can be completed in an afternoon for a set of agents in, in the right conditions, which is, you know, from, uh, you know, from an operations perspective, it's just really, uh, you know, an absolute game changer when it comes to some of the things that, that you know, that Karsten and Sarah mentioned around scalability, flexing up and down, um, you know, every so, so often, you know, clients are just carrying extra headcount in their business because they don't want to reduce it to have to hire on and retrain. They're going to have people under contract. And so even when there's a dip in their business, they don't, get that reward as far as a reduction in cost. And with the Yumde platform, you are benefiting from that cost reduction and never having more people than you really need um, be because of how it's set up. And that, and that is really uh, a, a very different. Now, I think when it comes to classic training, as far as the new starter training, we have a really, really nice uh, learning management system, which is an online system where we can put modules into, uh, you know, training modules in there, have quizzes, have interactive role plays scheduled, actually, you know, uh, have people make completion tests to make sure they've really retained all the knowledge. So there's a really nice uh, uh, online learning system that actually has gamification inside of it, uh, which means that you can, you know, reward points and, and inspire people to, uh, you know, to, to take even more training than maybe they need to. So when you're looking at upskilling people for different verticals, or, or as Karsten said, for inbound, we can use our learning, learning management system to put trainings there, uh, and actually people can take them in their own time if they're also interested in earning more money or doing other you know elements of the business. So I think the 
the, the fact that the, the, the learning management system is there and we've really taken a focused approach on remote training. It's not something where we train and then we in, incidentally have to do it remotely. It's really focused on that remote training. Um, and, and I think that, that along with equality really helps to ramp people up very quickly. Thanks, Neil. Um, we are just coming up to the last 10 minutes of the session now. So if you're watching live today and you want to put your own questions to Neil, Dr. Carsten or Sarah, you can do so um, over the next 11 minutes or so using the Q&A function on the bottom of your screen. Um, but Neil, I have another follow up question for you. Um, obviously, the big talk in CX right now is artificial intelligence um, and a certain chat related um, development. Um, so some people may be sat at home wondering, watching the session, obviously, um, but wondering, can AI do this job? for me um what would be your answer to that so it, can ai just do everything for you i think not right now um not unless you're doing it at an, an incredible scale uh, but ai can be and is an incredible assist assist right so one of the elements that we have in our calling platform is you know an AI analysis of the calls, which can flag up which calls you need to maybe take a look at. You can configure it to actually, you know, flag certain phrases, flag certain emotions, right? Which which allows you to focus on specific calls, right? It also allows agents to get some coaching in real time. Uh, you know, if if there's certain specific elements that we want someone to go through in a call, right? Then they can really, uh, you know, have that AI assist within the call. So I think. AI is an incredibly powerful tool that can make, you know, it easier for agents, make it easier for managers, get you better quality. It can also, when it's on a front end, offer a lot of immediate assistance through, you know, through chatbots and other elements, but it always, you know, right now, it certainly needs that, you know, that human support because oftentimes it just puts you in loops and does all the things that make people want to pull their hair out. Uh, and so if you don't have some people really giving feedback as far as how to improve those systems and always be there behind it, uh, it's, it's kind of destined for failure. The digital um, dead ends that plague everybody's yeah. CSAT scores, yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit more broadly now about technology. Um, Neil, what role do you see technology playing in improving the overall customer experience? <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it's critical what it's done over the last, you know, already last 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, I guess, even further back than that it is quite incredible. And I think where you get to today, where you're able to give live coaching and calls, you're able to flag exactly, you know, the, the calls that you want to listen to, you're able to use all of that together. And it's a combination of you can use it, you know, from a reporting perspective afterwards, but you can also use it in real time. And I think that what what the the, the biggest I guess advance or push that I've seen being used more recently is that voice AI. With the NLP engines being better and better, you just see what used to be very limited to text AI starting to be integrated in voice and starting to be used more and more. So for me, the, the, the thing that's gonna take the biggest jump over the next couple of years is that voice AI and how that is used for coaching, feedback, and everything related to making that customer experience better. That's interesting. Um, Sarah, same question to you. What role do you see technology playing in improving overall customer experience? Well, it's a critical role, of course, because it um, allows you also to, um, you know, make it easier on both hands, on the partner end, on the, on the um, client end, and the self self services and um, you know, um, artificial intelligence services you can get out of it make you make it easier for your team to really concentrate on what matters most, you know, um, to uh, concentrate on quality work, on, um, you know, refining uh, the, the steps you need to take to, to make the service even better, and also to maybe concentrate on analysis and decision database decisions because you have it already done you know let's say the the um the manual part is not necessary so you can concentrate on what the data means and what we can do based on that so uh, you can also make um, lower risk changes i would say in concentrating in that and allowing um the technology to do the yeah Let's, let's say the less funny part of the job. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I follow. Um, Dr. Carsten, what's your outlook for technology in CX? Yes, I mean, as um, as Neil mentioned, I think this voice AI, AI as you mentioned, or I can call it uh, speech analytics, uh, maybe in a more narrow term, I think it helps you on, 
on four excellent dimensions. Um, first of all, ob obviously it can help your digital excellence. While, for example, if you're working with phone bots, for example, uh, with the so-called portals, yeah, uh, you will provide you will can provide much better input from your live conversations to make uh, a bot more real and more uh, acceptable by by people. Uh, the second topic is obviously employee excellence. Also, as Neil mentioned, you have much better opportunities to train. Uh, your employees basically real time providing them feedback if the words they are using are positive and not negative or based provide them the trigger words they they should use this obviously brings along the customer excellence as a as a third topic because um, the, the the customers or the, the agent can provide customers with the with the input basically they are requesting and in addition, if you think about next best action, uh, next best option, for example, and you have the accordingly a CRM that helps you, you can basically uh, basically um, um, recommend customers the, the products and services they really want, or that you don't do it. So to basically you don't bother them. And that obviously goes along with operational excellence as a fourth dimension that you basically, uh, that the, the agent will be helped. Is this a customer basically where you have to be really short and, and, and you have basically have to come to an end in the conversation or is it a customer where you actually need to take some more time because he's someone where you need to explain more, uh, which helps you then obviously basically to, to improve your customer handling time uh, in the real conversation, so I, I think it will play play a huge role in making in, in making real conversations more meaningful, and as a as a basically as a as a game changer for uh, basically customer uh, satisfaction or for customer uh, experience. Because I think this part will stay while you will try to get messages down, while your mails down, and so on. So this will be still a game changer as a personal contact. Excellent. Um, so there is one huge um, topic that we haven't actually quite covered yet, and that is A-B testing. Um, so Neil, I'm going to hand over to you um, to explain um, how this works with Yumday. Yeah, so I mean, one of the biggest ways in which we've gotten some of our biggest clients is actually A-B testing, right? So there's a lot of people out there who, you know, they have a current provider, they're maybe not that happy with it, or they're not sure if they could do better. Um, and A-B testing is an incredible way to, to really test how good is your current service and can I do it better and or for cheaper. Uh, so what we get is we do get a lot of customers coming to us just saying, hey, well, let's try this with two, three agents and let's have a look at how that compares to what my standard call setting is getting. What, how does the productivity look? And one of the really interesting things is in the Yumde model, you, you're able to pay talents just per minute they're on the phone, per ticket they complete, per success. So it really drives productivity. And what we are finding is that when you pay these agents or in talents for just productivity, then when you get to the A-B testing, you realize that the existing call center operation is in fact not very productive and that incentivizing the, 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 the freelancers in the right way gives you a better experience and more productive. And then that A-B testing is something that with Yumde, it's easy to scale up, scale down, um, and we find a lot of customers coming to us just testing to see you know, where their current service levels are at. Excellent. Thanks, Neil. Um, we are just in the last couple of minutes of the session now, um, so we're going to go to closing comments. Um, Neil, to you first, how would you like to um, summarize and just give some key, key, key takeaways sorry, for our audience members who are live today? I guess the key takeaway for me is that uh, I must say that a couple of years ago, I wasn't really focused on how much a software driven platform could change what I was doing. And, you know, just one year later, I, I have to say that this software driven approach that Yumde has to this entire solution is is absolutely going to disrupt the market in a major way over the next you know couple of years and is already doing so because it is just able to provide global sourcing at the click of a button with integrated quality and everything else. And it's something that um, I, it just really blew my mind and I must say I'm still you know, blown away by it very often. Thanks, Neil. Um, and Sarah, any closing comments um, from your side? 
Yes, of course. I mean, for us, it's really um, has been um, fundamental to find out these possibilities within the Yumday world, uh, because, you know, coming um, from other, you know, typical um, partner cooperations, you have seen frustrations and you had to, you know, uh, stick to the timings for recruiting and for implementing changes. And with the UMD platform, you're able to do this like within uh, a couple of days and it allows you really to to play with flexibility and also to ramp up, which is of course something of a critical, a critical point for a startup looking to become a scale up and to really, um, yeah, to assert itself in the e-commerce world. That's really great insights. Yeah, Dr. Carsten. Oh, sorry, you're just on mute there. Sorry. I think you need to know that Neil mentioned is basically that in this like B2B environment you're operating mm -hmm. in basis one touch or one click approach. Basically, what you express expect as a customer or consumer, you basically provide now to business clients. And that is basically actually, and as you mentioned, is optimizing the outsourcing spend. Yeah, and to, to be really flexible. And, and by doing this, you can do this A and B testing. Yeah, we did this A, a B testing. Uh, on, on, on various dimensions and and uh, yeah and, and this is basically how we can test we test talents and in this ma matter you don't, you you don't you can test teams but you can also test individuals on a, on a global scale and uh, you basically then have a direct feedback of what is a custom experience because you can listen to the calls and I think that summarizes it in a nutshell pretty good the, the advantages of this approach yeah and in, in, in general. And, and this is really a game changer in my perspective. Fantastic. Um, well, to all our speakers today, a huge thanks um, for your time, for your insights, um, and for the practical um, advice that you shared with our network members today. Um, special thanks to Neil for representing Yum Day um, and telling us all about the solution. Um, and to our audience members, enjoy the rest of CX EMEA. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.